So Garrett Dodge from Everett, Washington called me up and said that he'd like to come to Alaska and see how a country cousin makes it. And he wanted to camp in the woods. And he wanted to learn how to hunt and build fires and build shelters and learn outdoor extreme survival um, things from a country cousin. So we put together a curriculum and this lean-to that we're in right now is where we spent the night on the night of the January's full moon for completion of the um, spruce shelter. The moose is actually done now and I cooked it just like our ancestors did in Ireland. It's January 26, 2010 or January 27, 2010 and it's pretty late but I don't know what time it is. It's probably like midnight or something. This is made from spruce boughs and this is a threshold underneath here is um, more spruce boughs and smaller spruce boughs and then um, grass and we stayed in here overnight from 8 o'clock at night till 9 o'clock the next day it was 35 degrees when we went to bed and minus 5 when we woke up and it was a good night we had a good time during his time he was here um, we had the anthropology class and we flint napped a couple of knives out of a piece of flint and we disassembled a neighbor's hog you need three things you need a hammer stone you need a flint or a chert or something that will fractionalize um, in a conical way and you need the knowledge of how to do it this is what our ancestors did Wow. This cuts really good. good. This is a rock. Yeah. anatomy and physiology class and animal disassembly class with paleotechnic tools. Um, we learned to make a fire with um, beginning and intermediate. An intermediate fire building is with a, an old-fashioned flint and steel and char cloth and Garrett did really good at that, learned how to do that. He uh, he learned a trajectory in ballistics and shot an SKS and a 22. Yeah, you're out. And we had an astronomy class, and he saw the Milky Way at the Northern Lights and heard a fox cry. He knows where Polaris is and saw Saturn and Mars. We built ice caves. So, so you pound the sticks in, so when you're on the inside and you're digging it out, when you come to the sticks, you've known not to dig any deeper because you'll be digging a hole right out the side of your house. Yeah. yeah. It's 
so. We invited the neighbor kids over and we um, had roast squirrel on a stick. That was a lot of fun. Um, Garrett did the, uh, again, did the uh, disassembly in the uh, way that our ancestors did. He used his fingers and um, skinned it and gutted it. He said it tastes like a cross between bacon, moose meat, and chicken. So I'm making two points so I can shish kebab this squirrel on these points. Okay, so open them up right here like this. Yeah, and we put that through here like this. Yeah. Like that. I come here right here like that. We skewer him through here like that. We bring him down so he's on here like that. Okay. I want a roast up. Well, I thought you said you couldn't eat a squirrel because you had a cavity. We went dog sledding. Um, Shamika um, did a wonderful job of teaching a clinic for an afternoon. And he got to race behind some dogs and they did a really good job. Long nights by the fire gave us plenty of time for history class. And since now we have a common ancestry, and I'm a history nut, we talked about the expansion of the Roman Empire, we talked about Hadrian's Wall, and the speakers of the, the Gaelic and the Celts and the Picts, and of William Wallace and Longshanks, and of the Magna Carta. Oh yeah, another thing about history class. He earned this bone-handled knife for memorizing the first two paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence. And for knowing what all those big words like unalienable rights mean and where they come from. And he earned a couple of Franklins for understanding what all the big words in the preamble of the Constitution mean. And if, this, if one of his teachers is watching this and he's trying to get extra credit, you might want to ask him to review that and uh, and see if he can still recite the first two paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence. It never hurts to uh, to re revisit that. Okay, what we have here is leftover um, shells from last night's dinner of mussels, some bacon fat and a birch piece of birch conch that's working as a wick and these are nice little lamps um, and they're keeping the shelter it's well I can see my breath it's, it's about 35 degrees in here and it's about zero outside and the winds blowing at about 30 miles an hour and I could say that it's all in all, it's pretty toasty and warm in here. Let me a look at how much room is in here. So there's enough room in here for two people. And that's a view outside into the cold, nasty wind. And another shot of our nice warm lamps that warming this place up. And this is the shelter that um, Garrett and Wyatt and Walker and I built um, the day before yesterday.